The death of so many entrepreneurs is intellectual laziness. Your ability to only look at life as black and white. The truth of the matter is, life has a lot of gray areas. Life has a lot of complexities. And one of the most important things that you have to understand in business is that you can have two seemingly opposite thoughts that on the surface contradict each other in the message that it's saying. Those two concepts oftentimes actually works hand in hand in order for you to achieve real success. I know I just said a mouthful. What do I mean when I say you can have two seemingly contradictory ideas that work hand in hand toward your success? A lot of times on the internet, and this is one of the big dangers for a lot of startup entrepreneurs, they will hear one message and they will go all the way with that message without thinking about the other side of the coin. Today, I wanted to highlight three of those things, okay? Let's start at the first one. You know, how many times have you ever heard somebody tell you um, about the average millionaire having multiple streams of income, right? Have you ever heard that? Diversify, right? You can't put all of your eggs in one basket. The average millionaire has seven different streams of income. It's good for you to be a serial entrepreneur and have this business here and that business there. And people start to become a jack of all trades after hearing this message. The problem is you may not have even become good enough at one thing in order to move on to another thing. So you look at a guy like Elon Musk. He started multiple billion dollar companies, PayPal, Tesla, SpaceX. And you look at that and say, man, you know, I'm as talented as Elon Musk. I can work hard too. So what I'll do is I'll start this one business today. I'll start another business tomorrow. And the next week I'll be on to something different. And for most of us, this is the reason why we're great starters, but horrible finishers. You got all the ideas in the world and it never takes off. See, although the average millionaire does have seven different streams of income, one thought they got to having a successful stream by having focus, another thought. So it's not about having, you know, your eggs in all of these different baskets when you're first starting off, it's about putting all of your eggs in one basket and watching the hell out of that basket. You know, every time I reflect on how things went for me and my business from year to year, one of my biggest regrets is always that I actually diversified myself too much too fast. My business called for me to be all in. My business called for my time, my energy, my attention, my money and investments, okay? And I could have given so much more of myself into my company, but the problem was I bought into the next shiny object. I bought into another business idea, another business venture, and I could have made a few dollars on the side here and there, <laughs> but you don't want to sabotage your plan A for your plan B. In your business, it's a lot like a marriage. You don't want to sabotage your wife for thinking about a side chick. And that's what so many people tend to do when they're hearing other people tell them about how the average millionaire has seven different streams of income. See, here's the problem with media bias. You only see the climax of a person's success. You don't see all of the things that led up to their success behind the scenes. 
So you might look at, you know, an entrepreneur like an Elon Musk or like a Warren Buffett or a Bill Gates, whoever the case may be, and you might say, well, Uzziah, see, this entrepreneur that makes this amount of money has their hand in all of these different things. But what you don't see that's not being just glorified in the media is what were they doing in year one? when they were a startup entrepreneur just like you? What were they doing for the first five years when they were trying to get their business off the ground? Did they have their mind on every different distraction? Were they watching a trillion different YouTube videos from a billion different teachers saying a billion different things? Did they scatter their energy? Or did they focus it all on one area? See, the real reason why I'm doing this video is because I want you to understand that you balancing your brain has a lot to do with making multiple concepts work in a way that connects best with your life circumstance. If you already have a successful business and you've got systems rolling, you've got money coming in on autopilot and you could step away from it, then sure, you could be in a great position to diversify. But if you're watching the next man who's already accomplished things that you haven't accomplished, you're hearing him say diversify, but you didn't see him two days ago focusing on being focused, okay? Both of these concepts have a lot of important value and you can't just make it one or the other. See, in the long term, you will want to have your assets diversified because if any one thing falls under, then you have other assets in place to keep you going, okay? So right now, I've got uh, a business that I'm running. I've got real estate investments. I've got money in the stock market. I've got different things. But I didn't just start off on day one doing three different things. I knew which concept to apply when. Let me focus on the second thing here, okay? Working smart versus working hard. How many times have you heard different people on social media either largely like be fanatical <laughs> about one side of the equation or the other? So you get some people on the hard working side that are like hustle, 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 hustle. Grind it, grind it, grind it, grind it, grind it, grind it. Never sleep, never speak. Never see anybody. Just put your head in the sand and don't come up until you're successful. You hear people say that. And then you hear other people say, oh, man, you know, working hard is for dummies, man. You know, only a fool will work hard because all I have to do is just think my way to success. All I have to do is work smarter rather than harder. I don't just have to work in my business, I could just work on my business. And the problem is they're selling you concepts when they tell you that, but they're not giving you the disclaimer on how much you should take and run with any one side of this equation. Here's what I mean when I say that. The truth of the matter is both of these things work hand in hand for anybody to be successful. I don't care who it is that you're talking about, whether it's Jeff Bezos, trillion dollar business owner of Amazon.com, whether you're talking about Steve Jobs, founder of Apple, whether you're talking about Sam Walton, the largest discount retailer physically in the world, Walmart, these are all people that understood the value of working hard as hell. Now, were they very smart individuals? Absolutely. You look at Bill Gates, huge IQ score. But Bill Gates worked his ass off at building Microsoft. See, a lot of people, they hear working smart and they tend to love it because they want to live the dream from day one. They want to be under the delusion 
that if only you would just spend eight hours sharpening the saw, you would never have to actually cut down the tree <laughs> because the, sharp, the saw is just so sharp in your mind that all you got to do is just look at the tree and the tree is going to fall. Even with the sharpest saw in the world, you still got to take it up against the tree and get to work with cutting it down, all right? You've got to know how to balance these concepts out. But now what's the pro or the con of working hard, right? The pro is you got to be able to put in a certain number of hours in order to achieve a result. And when you're first starting out as an uh, startup entrepreneur, you probably have to put in more hours than a person that's been doing their business for 10 to 20 years. That's just facts, okay? Now, what's one of the cons of working hard? Because no, nothing can come to a person that doesn't know how to put in work. It's just a prerequisite to success. Now, what's the con of working hard? One of the cons of working hard is you can overvalue the idea of hard work so much that you never actually think about what it is that you're doing. There's a good chance that you're mastering the wrong thing right now in your life. You know the reason why I say that? Because up until this point, you've already gone through so many years of programming where society has told you to focus on things that really don't give you a world of results. They've told you, go to school, make good grades, amass all of the student loan debt in hopes that as soon as you get out of college, jobs are just going to be lined up. You're just going to be able to make money hand over fist. And who cares that you racked up $200,000 in debt going to school to learn underwater basket weaving. You're just going to be such a hot commodity now that you have a college degree, because the only way you can be successful is if you have a college degree, that, you know, life is just going to be a crystal stair. I, as a college graduate, am going to tell you that's complete BS right? <laughs> You're going to get paid in direct proportion to the problem of uh, size of the problems that you solve. Um, and skills is what pay the bills. But the point that I'm making here when it comes to working hard at, in terms of a con is I know a lot of people that have worked hard as hell at school. I know a lot of people that have worked hard as hell at their job. And guess what? There's still so many people that graduate from Ivy League institutions every year that had stellar grades that are unemployed because 50% of all jobs in America are being cut within the next five years. You're still living under scarce times. We're only a few years away from the next major economic collapse. Okay, so what happens in times where you might be working at a job? And yeah, you're putting in extra hours, but companies do layoffs all the time. When I graduated from um, Baylor University, I worked in corporate America for a number of years. I worked at Hewlett Packard. And during the time that I worked at Hewlett Packard, over 50,000 people was laid off. Only by the grace of God was I not one of those people. I was one of the lucky ones that got to resign in my own time, okay? But you don't have control over having a company layoff on a business that you don't run. So regardless of how hard you work, what if you're working hard at mastering the wrong thing? You see that? Better for your hard work to go to something that makes sense. And you won't know what makes sense unless you're actually thinking, okay? I often tell this to a lot of my clients. Why do you think that the number one like financial success book out there is a book called Think and Grow Rich. Why is it the title of the book, Work and Grow Rich, Act and Grow Rich, Hustle and Grow Rich? Why did Napoleon Hill go and talk to some of the richest people that have ever walked the face of the earth only to come back and realize that one of the biggest determinants of their success was the thoughts that they have. 
because you can't just work hard. You have to work smart. So many of us have had family members and friends that have worked themselves into the ground with nothing to show for it. Whole case in point, you've got to have both. You've got to have strategics and tactics. You've got to have strategy and execution. You've got to work hard and work smart. Hell, you won't even know how to work smart until you've done some hard work to know that you got to do something better in the first place. Don't just get on one side of the other on this to the extreme because otherwise you're going to just be asked out. I don't know how it's better to say that. You're going to be in a bad situation, okay? Third and final point. You hear a lot of people talk about, you know, the concept of debt. You might have seen me in prior videos talking about the significance of getting out of debt. Now, a lot of times when I'm talking about getting out of debt, what I'm really talking about is getting out of bad debt. Debt that is not making you any more money at the end of the day. I'm going to give you an example. I've spent money on stupid things. And I've also made some wise investments. And I've done both by taking out additional debt. I have splurged and I have bought like little fancy things that I never hardly use, you know, flashy couches, lovely clothes, traveling and doing all of these things. And I ran up debt on a credit card. And then I've also made wise investments through real estate, my business, as well as other passive streams of income where I might have taken out a mortgage in order to make a certain investment. Now, a lot of times, again, instead of seeing the gray in this subject matter, people will either swing hard on one end of the fence. So you'll get some people that will be just all team no debt and they'll just be like, you know what? Debt is the devil. You know, never have debt for any reason at all. Just, you know, take life as it comes. And what is happening to a lot of people that have this no debt at all mentality is they're working at jobs that they can't stand they are delaying their life until retirement. Also, that way they could spend the first 60 years of their life saying, hey, I know that I lived a life that I really didn't enjoy, but hey, at least I did it with no debt. <laughs> at least now that I'm 60 plus, I can retire, I can have money in the bank, and the remaining years of my life in a wheelchair existence, I can now find satisfaction and joy. I know that I'm oversimplifying for any of y'all that are 60 plus, please don't get offended. The point that I'm trying to make is that you cannot go to any end of the extreme to such an extent that you have not actually thought through the sense of how both concepts benefit your life based upon your personal circumstance. Okay. When I was $100,000 in the hole after graduating from college, it made a lot of sense for me to focus on getting out of that debt as quickly as possible because I was paying more money from student loans every month than I was paying on my cost of rent. The money that I could have been putting towards investments to actually help me grow my assets and build my net worth and leave a legacy on this earth was being swallowed up by the amount of money that I had to pay towards all of these student loan accounts. And so in that scenario, no debt is the best thing for me to do. But guess what I did as soon as I got out of debt? I started saving 20% of a down payment into a property that I wanted to buy as a duplex so that way I could create a new stream of income. Now, did I have hundreds of thousands of dollars in liquid cash to be able to buy a house outright? No. And if I would have waited 
for the opportunity to have that $100,000 in debt in cash, who knows when it would have happened, if it would have happened at all. Who knows what opportunities would have passed me by. So what I did in that instance was I took out a mortgage only under the pretense that I'm taking out a debt on something that's going to be a money maker for me. See, I didn't take out a mortgage just to be able to buy a home like most people do, which is a complete money pit that's not making them any money at all. It's actually losing them money because being a homeowner is expensive. I took out a debt for something that was actually giving me an extra check every single month without me having to do any work for it. Okay, so in that scenario, that actually helped me to generate more wealth over time by utilizing debt. In fact, if you look at some of the most successful entrepreneurs, they'll tell you that they were in debt in building their business because it takes a lot of money to really grow a company. Do I advise that you take out a business loan when you're first getting started and you don't know what the hell you're doing? Absolutely not, because then you're going to become a slave to the bank and whatever lender it is that you owe money to. You're going to be in desperation. You're going to be in a crisis. But what I would say is, if you're just of the mindset that, oh, well, you know, debt may never make sense in any scenario, no matter what, you're just on one end of the extreme, then guess what? That means that for everything that you want to be able to accomplish in your life, you're always going to get there 10 times slower than somebody else who might have leveraged that, okay? You're always going to operate within the slow lane of life, as one of my mentors, MJ DeMarco, would say, because you have to work really hard just to get to a point of having everything on your own. You have to be able to take the concepts that I'm giving to you from these videos and say, okay, how do these concepts, which all make sense, how does that work in my life personally based upon my unique set of circumstances? If I'm running a business and depending upon where I'm at in that business currently, does it make sense for me to focus more in growing a business that is not running on its own? Or am I in a position to diversify, which will build up my net worth in time? Should I be working smarter right now? Or maybe am I spending too much time thinking and not enough time doing? These are things, you only know this about yourself. I can't see you behind this computer screen. Last but not least, are you in good debt or are you in bad debt? Good debt being you've taken out a debt on something that's making you more money, so you're actually growing your assets, you're actually growing your net worth, or are you the person that doesn't even need to think about no debt whatsoever because you've got so much bad debt, so much bad credit, that the number one thing that you need to do right now is get out of debt as quickly as possible, okay? Whether it be on your student loans, your car loans, your credit card payday loan, I don't want you to have nothing to do to talk about debt if this is your situation. You have to be able to rightly divide all of the concepts that you get in your life. None of these success principles are wrong, but what you've got to do is you've got to balance your brain. All successful entrepreneurs have the ability to take seemingly contradictory thoughts, ideas, and concepts and understands that both of them have validity and they know how to balance all of those concepts in their personal life. If you're a one-trick pony, and you put yourself at the extreme of any one of these three things and tons more, you're going to find yourself living a painful existence because life just isn't that cut and dry. I wish that it was. <laughs> It'd be a lot easier to be successful. Life is not that black and white, okay? There's a gray area. 
Sometimes it makes sense to do some things. Other times it makes sense to do other things. All right. You have to have that discernment. Okay. So here's what I want you to do. Number one, I want you to leave me a comment. I want you to pick one of these three topics that we discussed, and I want you to tell me about how you found yourself going too extreme on any one side of the fence. Tell me about a time where you actually transgressed against what I was saying in this video, and it came to your detriment. You were so busy like thinking that life was just so black and white in just one topic, that you just totally disregarded the other side of the coin and it actually came to your downfall and not to your benefit, okay? Leave me that comment. And as always, if you want to know how to be able to transition successfully out of your 9 to 5 job into starting your own business that will give you the freedom to have fun, not work at a job you can't stand, not make money doing something that makes you want to pull your hair out, doing something that will actually give you value in your life, something that you have fun doing, okay? If you want to transition out of your nine to five job into being your own boss that will allow you to have the freedom of having fun, traveling the world, and replacing your current income, I want you to click the link below or tap the card above because I want to be able to show you how to accomplish that step by step for free. Okay. I can make you no promises about when that's going to happen in your life because again, you have to be responsible for putting in the work. All I'm going to do is show you the basic fundamental steps. I'm going to outline it all for free. All you got to do is click that link above, tap the card below to get started. You have nothing to lose, all right? Make sure that you subscribe to this channel. Share this message with a friend. I'll see you guys on the next episode. Take care.